Good morning, thank you. Welcome everybody. Some of the buzz that we get after running these programmes is feedback. We hear about how relationships have developed, we hear about the, how they have used the tools and kept using the tools and kept coming back to them. They have less of that sense of isolation which you can feel when you're put in these projects. It enables people to build trust and understanding with others and get an appreciation of others' perspectives. What we're seeing is people moving further and faster with the specific changes they're trying to make. As a result of the workshop, we've changed this. We're working differently with our stakeholders. Some of the ideas, some of the concepts are bleeding out into other areas of work. So it's changing them as leaders of change. And that gives them a real impetus to move on and do more, even better and more wonderful things. We know that we're having an impact on delivering the change to improve the NHS. So good morning everyone. Ah, oh, good, better, thank you. The public sector and the NHS need people with skills to deliver transformational change and improvement. Improvement science and transformational skills are what this team can teach. And I want you to try and shout out some of the things that you thought we covered last time, because this is about consolidating some of the learning. We have staff who've been directors within the NHS who know what it's like to deliver transformational change on the ground. We have experts in transformational change, people who have doctorates in the subject matter. We have clinical psychologists who really understand what it means to people who are having to bring about change, where there's resistance to that change. Hello, oh, it looks like you've selected your project. Fantastic. My sort of principal involvement in that is uh, teaching those areas around psychological factors and human factors relating to people's projects and how they might move forward with those. So that's about collaboration, engagement, trust and understanding and all those factors to be aware of and mindful of in terms of thinking about your engagement with your key stakeholders in your project. So find someone to pair up with and work out who's going to take your control. What we bring along is a, is a fair degree of knowledge around how systems work, but also what we've done is put a lot of effort into understanding what are the theories and concepts and practices around how do you make transformation happen. We have two key suites of programmes, one's around leading transformational change and one's about delivering quality and service improvement and redesign. All of the people who come on our programmes have to be delivering some form of change. So this is very much based upon action learning. So it's not an abstract activity. It's something that people have to put in place in reality. And then we have the lovely driver diagram. Do you remember the driver diagram? Yeah, fondly, I hope. One of the reasons we've put the Transformational Change Programme together is we recognise that actually there's a pressing need for the health service as it is at the moment to, de to deliver transformational change at scale and at pace. So what we try to do is help people through some of those knotty, difficult issues so that what they can do is find their own path through it and eventually find a way to deliver their transformational change in a, in a way that works for them and their system and a way that allows them as leaders to develop their own practice as professionals in what they do. So maybe some team building in that as well, actually understanding what each other's strengths and weaknesses is. The transformation that we're doing in Horsham and Mid-Sussex CCG um, is to uh, create a community integrated cardio-respiratory renal and diabetes service and it requires a different skill set. We felt that it was um, different to some of the other change programmes that were being offered. So this is specifically around um, leading across organisational boundaries and for that, that resonated really clearly with the type of work that we're doing. I signed up because we're trying to bring about a big uh, process of change in Sheffield in elective care. We identified it's been difficult for all of us to find time together. The Transformation Change Programme deliberately does expose people to lots of concepts and ideas that are around dealing with the sort of the, the messiness, the difficulty that people are going to encounter when they work across system boundaries with different people. And how do you deliver a change that's actually large in scale and large in impact? It's a massive piece of work because you're talking about redesigning the whole of ops. Although it's a six month programme, it's actually only a relatively small number of days. But what we expect people to do is apply the learning back in their system but that's not intended to be anything different from the day job so it's about delivering the change that you've always had to deliver within your system but now you're applying some of the tools techniques and learning back into your system to make it work better and to make the change happen more effectively
It was really useful to get uh, quite a concentrated exploration of all the different types of tools that there are available. And I think that was, that's, it's almost like a bank of things that we can use. Some of the models that they've given us on this course will, will undoubtedly used in all arenas within the work in the fire service. The tools we're using most at the moment are the lens. That's been particularly helpful looking at cause and effect, understanding variability, understanding systems and starting to open that conversation about the psychology and the mindsets, um, which, is a, which is an area where I think people have been frightened to step into because um, we're not sure quite what we're going to unlock, but actually is, I think, the most critical part of transformational change. The use of driver diagrams, and I think that's going to become an important one um, for us to use in the process to actually bring things into, into things that people can, can conceptualise and see as plans. We talked about um, the importance of public narrative and we did a really powerful session where um, all of us spoke about you know why we were doing the particular um, piece of change work that we were involved in and uh, it created some really really strong and powerful um, responses in the audience you know, there was there were some people in the room moved to tears by some people's stories as to why they were involved in their change although I'm here for the reform of the maternity program. I actually work in quite a complex system within our own hospitals. We run across seven sites in central London and effectively run six semi-independent hospitals, which is itself a system to change. And we're also driving a large operational change program within the hospitals. So I'm, although I didn't come for that purpose, I think a lot of the learnings are things I'm going to take back to our team here in, uh, in UCLH. So you can absorb all of those ideas and be ready to start fresh again tomorrow. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. Transformational change is the big piece. It's the complex change across organisational boundaries. But clearly, it's underpinned by smaller pieces of work, lots of projects. And that's where improvement science comes in. Quality and service improvement and redesign, or QSA as we call it for short, is about delivering complicated or simple change within organisational boundaries. Hello, good morning. Morning, come on. Good morning, good morning. Thank you, thank you. Welcome everybody uh, to CUSA. CUSA programmes are aimed at anybody and everybody working in the NHS and even within our partner organisations, clinicians and non clinicians. Um, we have people who come along because they don't feel confident about service improvement in their new role. It might just have been something that, that they've been um, assigned and they've never done it before and don't know how to do it. And suddenly they come along and find out not just some tools and techniques, but there's a whole network of people there who are willing to help them and keen to help them. The suite of programmes ranges from a one-day fundamentals workshop we also have an improvement coach variant um, and then we have the CUSA practitioner program um, which is uh, aimed at people who are involved in projects, perhaps leading them or, or playing an active role in an improvement project. And it all culminates in our CUSA college, which is a development based on the pilot work that we did with our Train the Trainer program a couple of years ago. Our CUSA College programme, where we're teaching other people to roll out the five-day CUSA practitioner programme, actually accelerates the generation of the critical mass of people within the NHS who have improvement science skills. The really key elements of it are having a pair of trainers who have complementary skills. Is everyone happy with that as a...? Yeah. Okay. yeah. A lot of my knowledge and skills obviously come from a clinical background, I'm a nurse and so I um, have dealt with a lot of change management, I have, lot of, I have a lot of people management skills. Some of the things that we cover actually on the course I felt very comfortable with, whereas perhaps some of the day-to-day the -day sort of business kind of um, skills that Jeremy has I don't necessarily use every day in my life at work. Data, using data in application, you know those sort of things were the things I was more comfortable on um, and sort of you know, standing and doing presentations and that type of thing was something that I was quite au okay fait with. Um, but again, it was enabled us to get the best for both worlds. Alongside all of that is the importance of having a really, really good executive sponsor and, and that we found that to be absolutely vital. We've been constantly looking for opportunities to improve the care that we give to our patients and putting patients at the centre of everything that we do. So when the CUSA programme came along it just seemed to be the most natural opportunity for us to take along with lots of other opportunities that we've tried to drive forward. But what we're very keen to do is ensure that these quality initiatives are embedded in the organisation 
organisation. It's really important that when we initiate a programme like this that we see the benefits for the patients and the relatives um, but we also so the staff understand how it's meaningful for them. And this is a sponsor who can open doors, who can make the right introductions, who can help them bring along people onto their programmes but will also give them the time and the headroom to not just come along to the training programme itself but also to roll it out within their organisations. Say for example uh, that actually um, you're not here for CUSA. It's a, a secret society uh, meeting of the naturists group. <laughs> and in the next 10 minutes, we're going to ask you to take all of your clothes off. Please, nobody do that right now. But where would you go if we asked you? <laughs> <laughs> We have a rigorous set of assessments for CUSA College and some very clear um, processes for how we mark, moderate that work. We have an assessment and award board where all marks are ratified formally. Um, so again, a learner will know what criteria they need to meet in order to pass an assessment. They will also get very clear feedback um, on the different aspects and the different learning objectives as well for their own learning. The things that I like to bring back are the things that I like to think make a difference for patients mm. because at the end of the day that's why I'm here and I guess that's why we're all here mm. um, and however we can continue that quality improvement and quality journey we should all try to be part of that. Mm. So we've been supporting for a number of years now senior leaders in delivering transformational change and for the same time period, we've been supporting people in developing improvement science skills. But the two have never been brought together in one programme before. The combined programme is a new and exciting offer for this year. Um, and this is the first time ever as a team, or, or for, any, for that matter anyone else that we know of, has combined programmes so that we're equipping systems, local systems, not only in terms of transformational leadership skills in their senior leader teams, but also um, quality and service improvement skills in the teams that are delivering the projects that will underpin all of those changes that, that the NHS requires to make to deliver the five year forward view. I would recommend the course very much to others actually. It's um, a course that probably you could use no matter what area you're working in because the quality improvement methodologies really work across different contexts. I think it's a great opportunity to collaborate but I would also recommend it to other agencies outside of health. I think it's really important that we do that cross-sector learning. I think it's given us a huge amount of material and thought and process and again it's a bit like the project that we're running, it's bringing together ideas. I have recommended the programme because I found it very beneficial in running my um, projects and obviously to, and it's quite engaging. I certainly would recommend the CUSA programme to others um, and have already done so. I'm finding it very useful for the tools. Um, the actual content itself is relevant. Previously we would have sort of tussled about who provided the training, where the training would come from and this has given us an opportunity to all come to a new and neutral place to learn about different theories and ways of taking our change programme forwards. The Transformational Leadership Programme is, is superb. Um, we've certainly really valued it both as pairs and also as our wider team. 